as for my experience in uh, Christianity that would uh, influence my being a Muslim or my reversion, uh, I started by saying that Islam is uh, the irresistible truth. The truth of Tawheed cannot be denied. I was struggling in Christianity to blend the two, Tawheed and polytheism that we were used to. In Christianity there is something they call Trinity, that is the triune God, where we are taught to believe that there is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and the three gods are one, or at least they are working in unity, and uh, each one is independent. But again, if you look at it critically, you find it's a heap of nonsense. So at some point, I could not comprehend why there should be three gods. But again, alhamdulillah, when I met Islam, I met Muslim preachers preaching about Tawheed and several other topics and uh, concepts. I uh, lowered my ego and accepted to sit down with them and to discuss with them and to find and discover the truth. And that is how I found myself Islam, in Islam. Uh, the fact that Tawheed was actually the irresistible truth that I first met, it is very, very easy to explain that God is one than it is to explain that gods are three. So the concept of Tawheed is actually very, very simple and it is the backbone of Islam. And that particularly made me become a Muslim alongside several other concepts. Alhamdulillah, as I was reverting to Islam, uh, of course things weren't uh, very, very easy. But uh, with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everything became easy. I managed to gather myself to uh, push myself through Islamic school so that I could learn the ABCs of Islam. Alhamdulillah, I managed to go through uh, Majlis al-Ma'arif al-Islamiya, that's a preliminary college in uh, the coastal region of Kenya, that's in Mombasa, where I could study uh, Islam, the basic Imam course, which happened for two years, after which I was qualified to at least teach, run, lecture, on Islamic affairs and then after that I engaged myself in Dawah for uh, the longest time possible alhamdulillah until I met a friend, I met a friend who uh, managed to uh, take me through uh, uh, another another advanced course on Dawah, the Kaifiyat Dawah, that is Uslubu Dawah and alhamdulillah we managed to get a stint in Darul Mustafa University in Yemen uh, with this brother alhamdulillah uh, thereafter, we managed to get an admission in uh, a college in Kenya called Uma University College. But I didn't uh, be there for long because I had to look for another alternative. And the alternative was to find a suitable Islamic education that would help me in my future dawah. And that's how I ended up in Azhar University in Egypt where I did my faculty of dawah, alhamdulillah, which is actually really helping right now as I do my dawah every single moment. Alhamdulillah, I must thank the Muslim community for the massive support that I got uh, as I was going through all these uh, uh, experiences. Unfortunately, after I became a Muslim, after I confessed Islam, I met several challenges and most of the challenges were coming from the church where I served before as a reverend in the Lutheran church and uh, of course my uncles were the leaders of the church. In fact my uncle was the county director of the Lutheran church in Kenya and uh, of course it would not go down well with him and unfortunately he subjected me to several or, you know, uh, uh, despicable uh, conditions after I became a Muslim. And uh, uh, 
regardless of the same, I found Islam to be the best refuge for me. I didn't care what I was going through, alhamdulillah. I held strong to Islam, to the, my new faith, and alhamdulillah, uh, it was the best that one could have at that particular moment. And uh, up to now, Islam is still appealing. It's the only religion that I know. It's the best of the best. Uh, unfortunately to him, he failed completely. Uh, he thought he would allure me back to Christianity, to church, by so subjecting me to uh, horrible conditions, uh, arrests by the police, uh, jail, you know, being subjected to jail without even trial and all that. But alhamdulillah, I managed to overcome all that and I maintained my Islam. Eventually, they kept quiet. They never bothered with me again. They left me to go my own way. They left me to practice whatever religion I was practicing. And right now, as we speak, they are my ardent supporters. Right now, as we speak, they are my ardent supporters because they have seen what Islam is. I did not respond wrongly to them. I never responded with, uh, you know, uh, abuses or uh, hate or despise. But I responded with kind heart with humility that Islam taught me and Alhamdulillah it has really fought for me. So right now most of them are now my supporters, they love Islam, some of them are now becoming Muslims and Alhamdulillah that's what I like most. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala man la nabiyya ba'da Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa ahlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'allamtana innaka anta la alimul hakim wa ba'd To my brothers and sisters, alhamdulillah, it's another beautiful time that we may want to share a word or two I would want to talk to you about my reversion as uh, been requested by a number of people who may want to know how I reverted to Islam. Uh, this is a beautiful moment when we can, uh, you know, share that. I reverted to Islam in the year 2005 at an age of 27. I reverted to Islam when I was 27 years of age, alhamdulillah. And right now I am 41 so you can just imagine how long I have stayed in Islam, alhamdulillah. And uh, a number of reasons, uh, you know, occasioned me to become a Muslim. A number of reasons. But one of the principal reasons is that Islam is irresistibly correct. It is the truth. It is the truth that you cannot deny. It is a truth that is irresistible. And when I bumped on the truth, I actually accepted Islam, alhamdulillah, and up to now, I am a Muslim. I was born Kennedy Otieno Ombat. My Christian name was Kennedy Otieno Ombat. But alhamdulillah, after version, I assumed the name Omar al-Bashir. So right now, I am Omar al-Bashir. I am a Kenyan. I live in Kenya. I was born in the western part of Kenya or uh, the, the greater Nyanza province in a village called Kogana in Homa Bay County. This is a place that is predominantly inhabited by the Luo community in Kenya. And the Luo community uh, as a whole, they are diverse, found in Uganda, found in Tanzania, found in Ethiopia, found in Southern Sudan, found in the DRC. Uh, we are talking about over 10 million individuals speaking the language that I speak, speaking Luo. So I was born a Christian, but later became a Muslim. Another notable achievement that uh, I have seen, particularly as a Dai, in my village or in my Dawa activities is that uh, alongside a few friends, a few uh, notables, we managed to translate the Quran, the noble Quran into Luo language, into our language, the language we understand better, the language that our people speak. 
so that when we are to explain the Quran to them in their language, it is much easier, easier to dissolve, easier to understand, and therefore that avoids much, oh, you know, more questions. We managed to do this, it was launched officially in the year 2016 uh, in my hometown, that is Kidu Bay, and Alhamdulillah, it was attended by uh, many people who came for the launching, our uh, scholars, our academicians, our dais, and every other person who were there, Alhamdulillah, it was launched officially and we distributed over 50,000 copies. 50,000 copies were distributed for free. We distribute those books for free even today so that our people can understand, they can read and understand so that they do not have any other excuse that they do not understand the message of Islam. And we continue doing that. Not only that, we have also managed to translate several books, Kitabu Tawheed, we have translated Kitabu Salah, we have translated Adinul uh, Haq, okay? Uh, that was originally done by Dr. Bilal Phillips, and I translated that into Luo language, and uh, several other pamphlets that are uh, handheld, uh, you know, brochures, Islamic brochures, which actually help our people to understand one or two things in Islam. So, uh, this one, alongside several other things, uh, have been a milestone in my Dawa work in Nyanza province, alhamdulillah. Uh, still on uh, media, the mainstream media, uh, I also have programs on, tele uh, on, on radio. Uh, in Nairobi, there is a radio station called Ikra FM. This is a premier Islamic radio channel uh, in uh, Nairobi. So I also run a weekly program, program, a weekly live radio program called Ramen Mario, Yani the torch. Okay, the torch, a spotlight for the truth. So I run this program. It's a live program. I have to be in Nairobi every single weekend so that these programs can, you know, uh, take place. I have to do this coming from my village in Nyanza, over 400 kilometers, just to come and record these programs and be in my TV show. So all these need a lot of support. But as I said from the beginning, with or without support, Dawa must continue. That's what I know. So anybody who may be willing to extend his support to us so that we can do these programs, uh, you know, with ease are most welcome, inshallah. Uh, apart from that radio station in uh, Nairobi, there's another radio station in Kisumu. It's called Peace FM. Peace FM, I also have another program that is running every single week. It is called The Goodness of Islam. Okay, Mahasin islam Mahasin islam uh, this, this is a program that I'm running there. It's a lecture program, 40 or 50 minutes of a lecture that is running in Peace FM every single week and with several slots of, of uh, uh, repeats along the way. So uh, these are some of the milestones that uh, I have seen in my DAO programs in Kenya and Nyanza in particular. Yes, my brothers and sisters, DAO has been actually enjoyable. There's nothing as good as something you do with passion. You like what you do. And Alhamdulillah, crisscrossing the country, crisscrossing my, my home area, you know, doing DAO here and there is actually fulfilling. And I feel good doing it, with or without support. Dawa is my lifeline. It is in my veins. Uh, some of the achievements, as I continue to enumerate, some of the achievements are, I have been offered several chances in our local television stations where we do Dawa to the Luo people. Uh, notably is Lolo Television Network, where we do Dawa in Luo language. I go speak to people in Luo language. Another television station is Ilm TV. Ilm TV is in Nairobi, uh, the capital city of Kenya, where I take them through the uh, art of Dawa, the arts of Dawa, how you do Dawa, how to be successful in Dawa. 
these are series that I'm running in uh, Ilm TV. And then there is another television station called uh, Horizon Television. This is the, the most premier television station in Kenya, an Islamic channel, and uh, which is widely known, widely watched. So I also do a program there called The Unfolding Truth. The Unfolding Truth, I bring non-Muslims to the studio, and I talk to them, and I try to convince them to be Muslims. Alhamdulillah, they are embracing Islam, and they are enjoying the show. And actually, it is widely watched likewise. So this is also a milestone that we have in, uh, the, in, 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 in media, where the whole country can tune in and watch and listen to explanations that we do as we try to clear the misconceptions that are leveled against Islam by non-Muslims and other agnostics, inshallah. And Alhamdulillah, uh, right now I am fully involved in Dawa in my Mantika, Mantika Tinyanza, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا بِلِسَانِ قَوْمِهِ لِيُبَيِّنَ لَهُمْ فَيُضِلُّ اللَّهُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيَحْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends a messenger, a warner, a prophet, a caller to Islam, to his own people, speaking with his own people their own language, so that he may make it much easier for them to understand and comprehend, so that the people can come to Islam. That is what I have retreated to do, and that's why I left Mombasa, I left Nairobi, and I am now, you know, based in Nyanza, my home area, my village where I do Dawa, and Alhamdulillah, the result has been amazing and actually overwhelming. Notably, just to say a few, is that when we started our dawah, there was no activity in Nyanza. But Alhamdulillah, after we started dawah in Nyanza, in my own language, I managed, with the help of a few, you know, like-minded brothers, we managed to convert five churches, which converted into Masajid. And we are talking about over 8,000 people who have reverted to Islam in just one and a half years. That is from the beginning of 2019 up to now we have over 8,000 people who have reverted to Islam, who have changed from Christianity to Islam, who have changed their churches into Masajid and uh, the number keeps growing. And this is as a result of the fact that we make Islam understandable to them in their own language, the language they understand better, which is the Luo language. And the Luo language is a language that is spoken by over 10 million human beings in East and Central Africa. So this is one of uh, the you know achievements that I can note to my listeners that we managed to convert as many people as we could by the help of Allah and the fight still continues. We still need as many as possible. Dawah is not stopping. We are continuing with the Dawah every single day, inshallah, until dust fill our mouths and my brothers as muslims you know very well that uh, the prophet sallam, was ordered to proclaim to announce to every listening ear to know that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Kul hu allahu ahad allahu samad lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakul lahu kufwan ahad allah is one Allah is one and the unique. Now this proclamation must be done by each and everyone who has the capacity to do it. In as much as not all can do dawah, but at least you can do dawah in a way or another. If those gentlemen didn't go to the streets and proclaim Allah to be one and that he alone deserves to be worshipped, then I would not have gotten Islam. I would not have known the message of Islam. I would not have heard the message of Islam. But they went out that sunny, sunny day and they were burning themselves in the sun and I managed to find them preaching and that's how I managed to get, them, to get the message of Islam. Now, you and I must go out and do Dawa. Let's spread the message of Islam when you still have time to do it. Because when you are six feet deep, you are not going to do it. When you are sick on your sickbed, you are not going to do it. We must do what we have to do to go out and do Dawa. Or at least to support those who are doing Dawa. 
Because if you love the Prophet وسلم, then you have no option but to do what he said. And what did he say? He said, anni aya. Go out and deliver on my behalf, even if it ought to be only one verse, only one hadith, only one saying, only one act of goodness. Just go out and deliver this on my behalf. And if you do that, you shall have helped the Prophet وسلم. But if you don't, you are sleeping on the job. And it is not good for me, it is not good for you. Let's do Dawa when we are still Muslims. Let's do Dawa when we are still able to do that. Let's do Dawa when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has still, you know, some time and purpose for us on earth. Otherwise, it's going to reach a time when it's not going to be possible and you only have yourself to blame. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And lastly, as I conclude, uh, a lot can be achieved if we were to hold hands together. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa tasimu bihablillahi jami'ah wa la tafarraku. Hold your hands to the covenant, to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa la tafarraku and never be divided. Now always div uh, divided we uh, are weak. When we are divided we scatter around and we are weak. But uh, when we are together, we stand firm and we are very strong. That's the only way we can overcome. Dawa needs you. Dawa needs me. Dawa needs him. Dawa needs her. Now we, now we need to come together and do what we have to do. Now in Dawa, it is, uh, as I always say, it's like a relay race. The person who has started the heat, okay, if it were to be a 4x4 four four relay race, the person who started the heat doesn't complete the heat. It's handed, the button is handed over to the second person who is going to hand over to the third person and the fourth person is going to complete the heat. So it's always a, a real race. Now, if I am to go down there and preach to these people and alhamdulillah they embrace Islam, they become Muslims, it is actually hard, especially without resources, that I again be the same, same person to teach them, the same person to build them masajid, the same person to do everything to them, Yet, Dawa also needs me to go here and there. And you know, I'm crisscrossing Nyanza. Nyanza is wide. Nyanza is very, very wide. I'm talking to around, I'm talking about around 6 million people or thereby. So Nyanza is wide. I cannot, you know, crisscross it alone and accomplish. So we have to be several of us. If you cannot come personally to help do Dawa, then you can send your money. You can send some resources to come and help do Dawa. So, it is a real race. I may just do the conversion. I convert people to Islam, alhamdulillah. And I may want to show you where to build a masjid, where to build a madrasa, where to do this, where to, who to help to take to school, you know, to go and study Islam and come back and help me do that. I, I can only show you that. But I cannot finish everything myself. That means you need to be there. If you are not there physically, then you must be there monetarily, financially, so that our dawah succeeds. Otherwise, if I'm going to sit down, and you're going to sit down, and the other person is going to sit down, then Allah says in a verse that I always like to quote, He says, Ya ayyuhaladina amanu, man yartadda minkum a'andinihi, fasawfa yati Allahu bi qawmin yuhibbuhum wa yuhibbuna, adhilatin ala al-mu'minin, a'izatin ala al-kafirin, yujahiduna fi sabilillah, wa la yakhaf. Proclaim, announce to the Ahl al-Kitab, in this case, the Christians and the Jews. Tell them, we as Muslims, we are expected to tell them, to announce to them, to preach to them. Ta'ala wu ila kalimatin sawa'in bainana wa bainakum. Can you please come to a common term, a common goal, a common issue between us and you as Christians or as the people of the book? What is this common term? Allah na'abuda illa Allah. That we should not worship any other thing except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I, I, I know you may be having... Uh, uh, several other names to call him. You may call him God. You may call him the Almighty God. You may call him Ruth Nisai. You may call him Mungu. You may call him Elohim. You may call him Yahweh. You may call him whatever you call him. But you know, we are res uh, referring to one irresistible power. The only power behind creation. That is God Almighty. Call him whatever you want to call him. But we, in Arabic, we call him Allah. So when we talk about Allah, we are not talking about some Arab God. We are not talking about some Somali God or some Muslim God. We are talking about the power behind creation. Allahu Jalla Jalla. Now, the Prophet ﷺ is told to tell the Ahlul Kitab. 
ta'alu ila kalimatin sawa'in bainana wa bainakum come to a common term between us and you and the common term is Allah na abuda illa Allah that we should not worship any other thing except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wala natna takhida ba'duna ba'dan arbaban min dunillah and we should not actually pick for ourselves you know arbab you know these other demigods okay do not pick some angel to be your god like my fellow christian brothers picking uh, gabriel or the holy ghost they call him the holy ghost the holy spirit to be a god or a, 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 a god in the, in the in the three sets of gods this, this is wrong you should not pick omiri as my people used to do the lower the lower people they used to pick omiri a snake to be a god you should not pick some sort of a statue to be a god you should not speak you know a, a, a fellow being that is jesus or even the mother of jesus as the catholics do and other denominations they also do they pick uh, the mother of jesus to be a god which is wrong we should not pick some you know carving okay some some stone carving or tree carving and making a shape to be god no that's wrong we should only worship one and the only true god and we should not ascribe patterns to him so anybody who is ascribing partners to God is actually doing a crime. You are getting yourself into a felony and that felony is against your master, God himself, which is not good. Now we are angel to be your God, like my fellow Christian brothers, picking uh, Gabriel or the Holy Ghost, they call him the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, to be a God or a, 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 a God in the, in, the, in the three sets of gods. This, this is wrong. You should not pick Omiri as my people used to do the lower the lower people they used to pick omiri a snake to be a god you should not pick some sort of a statue to be a god you should not speak you know a, a, a fellow being that is jesus or even the mother of jesus as the catholics do and other denominations they also do they pick uh, the mother of jesus to be a god which is wrong we should not pick some you know carving okay some some stone carving or tree carving and making a shape to be god no that's wrong we should only worship one and the only true god and we should not ascribe patterns to him so anybody who is ascribing partners to god is actually doing a crime you are getting yourself into a felony and that felony is against your master god himself which is not good now we as muslims we are expected to preach to you تعالوا الى كلمه سواء بيننا وبينكم الا نعبد الا الله that we should not worship any other thing except allah ولا يتخذ بعضنا بعضا اربابا من دون الله and neither of you not a single person should, should pick anything other than god himself فان توالوا and we are advised as muslims فان توالوا if you refuse if you repudiate then فقولوا اشهدوا بان مسلمين we are only to tell you that we are muslims we are submitting to god we are submissive to his laws and power we are only trying to do our best as muslims to be good people as muslims and you know what our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is can only tell you what he's told because he just doesn't speak because he has to speak but he speaks because there is something to speak about and that's why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wal najmi اذا هوى ما ضل صاحبكم وما غوى وما ينطق عن الهوى ان هو الا وحي يوحى علمه شديد القوى our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam never speaks because he must speak no he speaks because there is something to speak and that's why we are speaking because there is something to speak to speak to you there is something to contemplate about today and that something to be contemplated to be contemplated upon is this verse never ever worship any other thing except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall you contemplate assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh